We need more women out there supporting women. Girl power. Glamour's given me a lot. It's given me a voice. They're the first magazine that was like, just be you. To be able to give women a platform where we can be acknowledged, we can be appreciated, and see reflections of ourselves. It's been wrong. I cannot be kid man. I'm kid woman. Thank you. Hello, I'm Deborah Joseph, Editor-in-Chief of Glamour, and I'm delighted to welcome you to the 2021 Glamour Women of the Year Awards, coming to you from the court in London's quiet Soho. We are so delighted to celebrate 20 years of Glamour's highlighting the achievements of incredible women, as we've always done. But the fact that this coincides around International Women's Day makes it even more special. And on that note, I'd like to welcome our brilliant host for this evening, comedian Catherine Ryan. Thanks, Deborah. It's been four long, arduous years since the last Glamour Women of the Year Awards, but like American democracy, we're back. Oh, great. Now we're like 90s Posh and Bex. Yeah, I'm the Romy to your Michelle. As Deborah said, Glamour's Women of the Year Awards has a proud history of recognizing phenomenal and inspirational women. And 2020 was a year like no other, not only because of the global health crisis and the sharply accelerated economic downturn, but also because we stopped carrying handbags and shunned our bras. Like a resurgence of the 1970s women's liberation movement, but with less fire and more homeschooling. Uh, it was nothing like the women's liberation movement for me. I spent the whole time trapped in the house compulsively loading the dishwasher. Yes, but crucially, without a bra. But without a bra. Okay. And I also had to listen to my Aunt Susan become an infectious disease expert overnight. That's been a real treat. Yet, while our government continued to deny science, so many phenomenal women across the globe stood up, spoke out, and shattered glass ceilings everywhere. Oh, good. In recognition of these extraordinary times, we've created extraordinary awards focused on extraordinary women who have and who are changing the game forever, which is why we're renaming tonight the Glamour Women of the Year Awards 2021, the Game Changers. And these awards are inclusive. So inclusive, in fact, that we have decided one of our awards will be presented to a man. Sure, men's voices are shrill and irritating, but perhaps that's because we aren't used to hearing from them in political briefings or boardroom meetings. So when the time comes, please be respectful and give the little lad your undivided attention. Bless him. Okay, you can go change now. Oh, thank God. Nothing fits me anymore since I moved my office so close to the fridge. Our first award of the night goes to our new gen game changer, the woman who wins this award has used her voice to change opinions on screen and off. And she doesn't think twice when it comes to standing up for her community, encouraging her peers to vote, or tackling gun crime. It's none other than the outstanding actor, model, and activist, Yara Shahidi. Hi all, it's Yara, and I wanted to start by saying thank you because I am so honored to be here and to be one of the honorees amidst a group of people that I genuinely so admire. To get a Game Changer Award is pretty surreal, especially just turning 21. And it makes me reflect on the people that have supported me in order to be able to have the space to do what I love to do so much. I think of the ways in which much of what I do is not new, but if anything inherited from the work of prior generations. It also makes me reflect on the words of one of my favorite humans, James Baldwin, in which he talks about the role of the artist as being the role of illuminating a path amidst darkness, of reaffirming our purpose. And I'm grateful to be in a position in which through my art and through my spaces outside of my work, I'm able to constantly talk about what matters to me and constantly help in the fight towards equity. I can say for certain that I am 
one of many humans. And if anything, I am more inspired by the fact that I am one of many faces. And my generation continues with such passion and such vigor, lead the way and innovate on new ways to fight for justice. I could not be luckier than to land in Gen Z because every time I don't feel hopeful, I look in front of me, I look to my left, to my right, and I see sources of inspiration. I can't wait to see the world that we reimagine together and I am looking forward to being a small part of it. Much love to everybody and thank you again. Congratulations to Yara. Next up is our beauty game changer. She hit our screens in 2016 as Eleven in Stranger Things and has gone on to challenge the beauty industry, setting up her own clean beauty range, Florence by Mills, which is non-toxic, vegan, sustainable, and cruelty-free. And at just 14, she was the youngest ever person to take on the role of a UNICEF ambassador. It's Millie Bobby Brown. Hi everyone. I hope you and your loved ones are safe and healthy. I am honoured to be receiving Glamour UK's Beauty Game Changer Award. A year and a half ago, I created Florence by Mills, a clean beauty and skincare brand with one message at its core. Beauty is about loving and expressing ourselves. Define beauty on our own terms. No rules, no struggle toward perfection, no beauty standards, just us playing with how we want to look feel and live. Looking forward, my hope is that everyone of all ages continues to spread love and kindness, which is another way beauty can take shape. Thank you again to Glamour UK for this amazing achievement and award. I'm so excited to put it up and to look at it as a reminder that beauty is whatever you are. Beauty is whatever you define it as, and I can't wait to change the game. At 14, I'd been awarded the highest number of sanctions for wearing my uniform skirt too short. You and me both. Mm. My headmaster said I'd been distracting the boys with my attire, but that was part of my world domination plan. That, that is an incredibly archaic attitude that perpetuates misogyny and suggests that boys' behaviors and reactions are the responsibilities of their female peers. I know. I knew that. Maybe you take the next one. Yeah. Sure. On to our Game Changing Model Award. In 2020, this woman captivated the world when she fronted her first major fashion campaign for Gucci, the first ever model with Down syndrome to do so. And last year, she was one of our very own glamour cover stars. Ladies and token gentlemen, we are proud to present this award to the star that is Ellie Goldstein. I think I want to be a model all the time because I love to be myself and I um, never give up. I want Gucci to use me again because I hope that um, other people with disabilities, they look up to me and I think they like to see me in a couple of magazines. Well, I think my style is just like uh, sassy, uh, sassy. I think like style is like clothes, like dresses, skirts, um, what else? Or tights and pyjamas. Difference is before I was a bit shy and nervous, but from now I'm all confident and I'm all prepared. Thank you, Glamour, for this honorary award. Thank you so much. I love you guys. Thank you. Bye. Since 1981, almost 33 million people around the world have died from AIDS-related illnesses. Yet there's still a lot of miseducation around the subject. However, our next award goes to a woman whose role in Channel 4's It's a Sin has been praised for representation of allyship to the LGBTQ community, shedding light on a much needed subject and challenging the stigma that still exists today. 
our game-changing rising star in partnership with Guerlain goes to Lydia West. Hi, I'd like to say a huge thank you to Glamour for this award. I would like to dedicate it to Russell T Davis for creating such a beautiful drama and beautiful character who we all fell in love with. And I'd like to say a massive thanks to Jill Norder for a while being Jill. The work of allies is super important as they are the voice between the the minority and the majority and it's their job to connect these voices and fight for equal rights. So this award is to all the allies out there, all these unsung heroes. We love you and we respect and cherish you forever. I'd like to thank the cast and crew of It's a Sin for being so amazing and honour those lives that sadly no longer with us because of HIV and AIDS. On that note, we can all be more Jill. And finally, thank you. Last year was unprecedented and impactful. The footage of George Floyd being suffocated as police officer Derek Chauvin knelt on his neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds will never leave us. The mental and emotional toll that so many in the Black community experience living in a systemically racist society is often overlooked or ignored entirely. Which is why our next two winners wanted to come together and open up the conversation. This year's charity game changer goes to the founders of the remarkable Black Minds Matter, Agnes Mwakatuma and Annie Nash whose mission is to connect Black individuals and families with free mental health services. While the winner of our Game Changing Influencer Award goes to a woman who is changing the world for the better by putting transgender rights on the mainstream agenda. But unlike our own Prime Minister, she holds the floor with poise, style, and great hair while doing so. It is the legend that is Monroe Bergdorf. Hi. Hi, Monroe. How are you doing? How's 2020 been for you? <laughs> um, I think for me, especially in relation to BMM, is the different conversations that were happening after the very sad murder of George Floyd. That time kind of allowed us all to pause, to really sit down and to really pay attention mm. to what was really going on and the different ways that black people were still being oppressed, mm. not only in the US, but also the UK. Yeah. That We're experiencing such a plethora of issues that all point back to white supremacy. Yeah. Just even listening to that yeah. consistently over this year. It becomes too much. It's a lot. This is the most isolated that we've ever been yeah. in our lives from each other and the most time that we've ever spent on social media. We don't even know how social media affects we us don't. mentally in the long run. With social media and activism, as much as you go into it with such good intentions and you really want to help, it does, like social media does end up kind of asking far too much of you than you mm. are willing to give. There's this pressure, isn't there, for everyone to yeah. be an activist, especially if you're a marginalised person. Yeah. I've gotten to the point now where I need a little time away from yeah. social media. I want my activism to be plugged into the organisations that I work with. Yeah. And I can't do that if I'm consistently being pulled into yeah. every single social media debate. Exactly. You can't pour from an empty cup. You can't. Last year taught me so much mm. about not just my power, but the power of community, mm. the power of addressing issues of racism, but yeah. most importantly, the ways in which systemic racism pours into the healthcare system. Mm. People would be really surprised how many obstacles marginalised people face in the healthcare system because the job of a healthcare professional is to treat everybody equally yeah. but that just doesn't happen because the thing with the implicit and unconscious bias is you don't know it. My mum's white and I had to explain to her the importance of having a black therapist. Yeah. When you go to a therapist and they don't understand what it's like to be a black woman or what it's like to be a black trans woman or a black queer trans woman, you end up explaining more than you should have to. Yeah. And then that's time that you could use actually working exactly. through your trauma. Convincing people who aren't trans and who aren't often black that you are a black trans person. And I say a black trans person because our experience is very unique. Yeah. Especially in the UK where only 3% of this country is black and only 1% of this country is trans. Yeah. So we're a minority of a minority. Not enough 
people that are gatekeepers, essentially, of how we see ourselves, um, you know, of our ability to transition medically. They're not really aware of the realities of, you know, the power that they wield and how at risk um, a lot of trans people really are. Yeah, definitely. I think we need the healthcare industry to kind of be vetting people more, yeah. not just going on qualifications, but also going on what that person um, truly believes in, what their thoughts are on equality, what their mm. thoughts are on gender and sexuality, because those are very important topics. It's, it's about the holistic experience of minorities, I feel, yeah. and lifting up the most marginalised members of society yes. because if we're centering them then everybody wins. Then everybody wins. Also just the responsibility of us to also ensure that we are standing up against other forms of racism, against other kind of groups. We can't mm. just be for black racism. Thank you so much for this award, Game Changing Influencer. We've got a long way to go but we're getting there so this is um, really, really special to me. Thank you very much. Thank you so much Glamour for this award on behalf of everyone at Black Minds Matter UK. It's so nice to know that so many of us are committed to changing the face of black mental health. So thank you so much for being a part of this journey. I'm sure someone will DM me what the note is. Our next winner is an actor, comedian, rapper, author, and TV host, and an all-around badass who last year was the first woman of Asian descent to win a Golden Globe in a lead actress category for her role in The Farewell. And tonight, she takes home the award for game-changing creator. It is, of course, Aquafina. Uh, hold for one second, and I'm gonna grab a piece of paper. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my iPad. Just close out of the Angry Birds and whatnot. First thing that I created when I was a kid were two imaginary friends. They were named Charlie and Madonna. She looked, she wore the Pee Wee Herman suit and I would blame them on everything. I think a lot of things, different things have inspired me, different parts of my life. A book of Charles Bukowski's uh, poems. Margaret Cho, the first time I saw Margaret Cho doing stand up was the first time I'd seen an Asian American woman um, that was on that stage, like uh, doing stand up, and Lucy Liu and Charlie's Angels, who uh, is a goddess and continues to be. And my grandma, obviously. Love her. But I, I really am just like free drawing. This is bizarre. I really didn't think that I was good for anything. And I remember always feeling like, you know, maybe my problem isn't that I, I'm not capable of doing those things, but, but what if I never love something so much that I'll do it forever? But then there was a moment uh, while I was filming, I started to realize that I did fulfill those goals that, that I never thought that I would as a child, simply by finding something that I would lose sleep over, that I uh, would drive myself crazy over, that, that I would cry over, that I would um, feel so much joy over. I was, I was drawing as I was talking to you and like reaching back into the inner depths of my mind and I didn't plan any of this. First of all, What's wrong with my shoes? What's wrong with, there's nothing wrong with those. Yes, they look like little loaves of bread, but delicious ones. Yeah, she don't look right, but it is abstract. Uh, oh, oh, and it, and, it went, and it went away. I am winning. I am winning today. Um, thank you so much, Glamour UK, for the uh, Game Changing Creator Award of, okay, I, just, I said E-Award, I'm so sorry. Thank you so much, Glamour UK, for uh, the honor of this award, the, the Game Changing Creator Award. My whole life has been, has been about uh, a desire to change the game. And I think when uh, we dare to do so, we make a better game. Thank you, Glamour UK, uh, for supporting powerful, cool women. Did I call myself a powerful, cool woman just now? Oh, God. A huge congrats to Aquafina. Fun fact, Aquafina began rapping at 13 and was let go from her PR job at a publishing house after creating the rap video, My Vag. So it just goes to show that to be a true game changer, you gotta take risks.
And now it's time for a musical interlude, not you. Discovered at the age of 12, she has amassed 21 platinum singles, 900 million YouTube views, and 3 billion streams worldwide. Her voice has been described as youthful and fragile, like a type of winged, warm-blooded vertebrate. It's Birdie. Thank you so much for inviting me to Glamour's Women of the Year Awards. I'd like to play you the new single from my upcoming album, Young Heart. This is Second Hand Leads. A huge thank you to Birdie. 
Many people dream of writing a book. Our next winner not only turned her dreams into reality many times over, she's also the first ever Black woman and Black Brit to win the Booker Prize for her masterpiece, Girl, Woman, Other. Over the past 20 years, she has been a prominent advocate for diversity and inclusion, and she is currently curating a new series called Black Britain, Writing Back, rediscovering works about Black Britain over the past century. Our game-changing author is the inspirational Bernadine Evaristo. Where do you think the future of Black British writing is? You know, the doors are opening, and that's amazing. They're opening in a way that's never happened before. I want to see our writers writing everything from every perspective, every genre. Because at the moment, we've tended to write literary fiction. There is a smaller audience for that. But our writers need to also be writing really commercial books that reach audiences and, and readers of millions even. Yeah, it's really about highlighting the diversity of the black British experience so we're not just you know, perpetually portrayed as a monolith. That's right, because we're as diverse as any other um, demographic out there. And it's very interesting because one of the things about Girl, Woman, Other is that people are surprised at the diversity of the characters within the novel. But what it does is it opens up the possibilities of who we are in this society. And that's what I'd like to see happening for black people and black women and people of colour in, in Britain. What have been your other game-changing moments? I think the first one was getting published by my current publishing house, Penguin. I had gone from the smallest publisher in the world to the largest publisher in the world. And that changed a lot in terms of how I was perceived and how my books were able to reach audiences. And then winning the Booker, of course, <laughs> in 2019 changed everything beyond my wildest imagination. Mm -hmm. Suddenly I became really well known as a writer globally and all the things that I could wish for my career came to me. Thank you, Glamour, for this wonderful game-changing author award. I'm totally delighted to receive it and to have this kind of acknowledgement for my work. So thank you so much. Next up, the man who really makes it sting when tax season rolls round and I learn that zero of my government owed money is going to feed Britain's hungry children like I reasonably assumed that it would in a compassionate society. He is a tireless campaigner for homelessness, hunger, and literacy, and who, in just 24 hours last June, forced the government to U-turn on their carefully considered decision to end free school meals for children from disadvantaged backgrounds. And in his spare time, he plays for Manchester United and England. Our game-changing man is the undeterred Marcus Rashford. Hi guys, I just wanted to say a big thank you to Glamour for the game-changing Man of the Year award. Our Entrepreneurial Game Changer Award goes to a businesswoman in a class of her own. After starting her career as a makeup artist, she founded her own beauty company, Huda Beauty, in 2013. And last year, it was valued at an eye-watering $1 billion. She has been named one of the 10 most powerful beauty influencers by Forbes and one of the 25 most influential people on the internet by Time magazine. It's Huda Katan. I'm so incredibly humbled to receive your Entrepreneurial Game Changer Award. I am such a fan of Glamour and I love being on the cover so much. It's a magazine that's changed my life in so many ways. And as a young girl who loves beauty so much, I would go to the magazine constantly to find so many tips and tricks and always wanted to be, you know, somebody who could be as glamorous as somebody who would be in Glamour. Makeup and beauty has been such a big journey for me. Um, you know, I've talked about my story in Makeup and Beauty and how it really transformed my life so much. I was able to become a character in it and really actually become myself, which was really amazing. For me, beauty is something that's gonna to continue to grow. It's gonna to continue to inspire people. It's gonna to touch people so much. But also, you know, with beauty standards, the world has changed in such a way because of social media, because of, you know, our voices that, you know, we've democratized beauty. We need to do it so much more. 
And I feel like that's happening. And I'm really, really proud of where the industry is going to go. Thank you so much, Glamour, for this incredible award. I love you guys so much. Bye. Mental health may be something that we're more comfortable talking about now, but that wasn't the case when almost a decade ago, our next winner publicly spoke about her mental health struggles for the first time with Glamour. She's continued to talk openly about her ongoing battle with depression, anxiety, and suicidal thoughts. Our mental health game changer is singer, presenter, and writer, Frankie Bridge. I always say that I'm someone that was born anxious. As I grew up in the public eye, I realized that I didn't have much control over my own life. And it got to a point where I felt like I was coming into work and I was being Frankie from the Saturdays rather than just Frankie, one person. I started feeling I didn't want to be around anymore. I didn't want to live my life anymore. I wasn't able to cope with day-to-day um, -day normal life without crying. Um, I found I wanted to spend all my time in bed and just kind of hide away. That was when I realised that maybe my depression and my anxiety had taken over me rather than me having control over it. I chose Glamour magazine to speak to about my mental health. It just seemed right at the time. I felt like they were going to be sensitive to the subject and they really were, they really got it. There was part of me that chose to do the interview to kind of say, oh actually I was in hospital because I had anxiety and depression and this is my story. But obviously I wanted to help others to open up and seek help where they needed to and, and it did that. The fact that people still come up and tell me about that one interview in Glamour magazine just means so much to me. I can remember watching my son um, bouncing on a trampoline and the pure joy and excitement of just that simple thing just made me realise, you know, as you get older, you don't appreciate those little things. Seeing life through a child's eye is just amazing. Um, so they make me extremely happy. Of some days, not so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Glamour, for my Mental Health Game Changer Award. It means so much to me. It's so nice to know that just by having honest and open conversations, you feel like I'm helping people. And this award is just the cherry on the top. So thank you so much. Well done to Frankie. When the next woman learned about girls missing school because they couldn't afford basic sanitary wear, aged just 17, she took on the UK government. And two years later, the Chancellor of the Exchequer announced that secondary schools in England would receive funding to provide sanitary products to those who need them. She continues to tackle the stigma of menstruation while studying history at Cambridge. She is Amika George, and she is our justice game changer. I want to say a huge, huge thank you to Glamour for this award. Thank you so much. I think it's incredible that activism is being recognised and it's important it's really being celebrated in 2021, in a year when there are so many possibilities for creating change. Thank you, Glamour. Ballin. Thank you. And I see you've upped your game as well. Oh yeah, I decided to put on matching sweats this time. The next award is for our sports game changer, which goes to Naomi Osaka. She's the first tennis player of Asian descent to hold the top rank in the singles, a three-time Grand Slam and reigning US Open champion, as well as being ranked the highest earning female athlete of all time in 2020. And if that wasn't enough, her powerful support of Black Lives Matter, wearing masks on court in the 2020 US Open, with the names of Black Americans killed due to police brutality, have put her in the headlines for all the right reasons. I wanted to thank you, Glamour, so much for this award. It really means a lot to me. And just to be nominated as, you know, a category of sports game changer, it's definitely very exciting and touching. So thank you so much.
When this next woman was expecting, she discovered how little Femtech was truly meeting the needs of women. So she did what any woman does, fixed it herself, setting up LV in 2013 and launching with two revolutionary products, a discreet breast pump and a pelvic floor trainer that, unlike my last three boyfriends, actually works. In 2019, she raised the largest ever amount for a single funding round in Femtech at $42 million. Our technology game changer is the tenacious Tanya Bowler. Hi everyone, I am Tanya Bowler, founder and CEO of LV, and we're all about creating smarter technology for women. As soon as I started being in this space and seeing that actually when it came to women's health, all technology was horribly designed and nothing really as bad as the breast pump. I don't know how many of you are familiar with the old architecture, but big, painful, noisy, cumbersome, difficult to use. So I just thought, well, what if we could design something completely silent, put it in your bra, let go, and the app does it for you. And that was our ambition and what we managed to achieve with LV Pump, the world's first silent wearable breast pump. But it has been a long journey, which is why it is so exciting. And I'm just so thrilled on behalf of the team to be accepting this Glamour Award for Tech Game Changer of the Year. It means so much for us to be recognized by Glamour for the work that we're doing. So thank you very much. What a woman. Our next winner is a woman who has had a hugely successful career that spans almost 30 years, defying critics to turn herself from pop star to fashion designer. Just call her Pivot Spice. And recently added a best-selling beauty line to her list of accolades. Our fashion game changer is a multiple-time glamour cover star. It's the trailblazing Victoria Beckham. Wow, game changer. Um, wow, thank you so much, glamour. I'm not so sure I deserve to be called a game changer, but thank you so much. This really does mean an enormous amount to me um, over my career. I've always tried to challenge the status quo and never take no for an answer. So thank you so much. This really does mean an enormous amount to me. Happy, happy anniversary to everybody at Glamour. And please stay safe. And I hope to see you all very, very soon. But thank you so much. This means the world to me. Happy birthday. Our next award goes to someone who has always used their platform as one of the most recognizable and highest paid models in the world to put women's wellness on the map, long before it was cool. In 2019, she launched her own brand, Cora Organics, in Australia, and today it's sold in over 30 countries across the world. Our wellness game changer is the formidable Miranda Kerr. Thank you so much, Glamour. This is so special. I feel very honored to be named one of your women of the year. It really means so much to me. I'm sad we're not together to celebrate, but um, actually, one second. But that's not stopping me from getting all dressed up for you guys. <laughs> no, in all seriousness though, thank you so much. I'm just so passionate about health and wellness and I have been my whole life. So to be recognized in, as a game changer in wellness really just means so much to me. I'm just really proud to help people realize that certified organic products can deliver powerful results in a healthy way. And my mission is to uplift and nurture people every day through powerful, clean certified organic products thank you again glamour i am just so grateful and so honored to have this award uh, sending so much love to you all our game-changing actor has starred in over 70 movies and is perhaps the first person to make the successful transition from bollywood to hollywood after taking the lead role in ABC's TV drama, Quantico. But she's also been dedicated to passionately supporting numerous causes along the way, from working with UNICEF since 2006, to setting up her eponymous foundation for the health and education of children in India, as well as campaigning for women's rights across the world. Congratulations to our winner, Priyanka Chopra Jonas. I actually did not think that I would be an actor, but I accidentally, um, I 
sort of fumbled upon the pageant world and I suddenly went from being, you know, a kid in 12th grade wearing a school uniform to speaking to heads of states and having opinions about econ economies around the world. I'm the kind of person, if you throw me into the deep end, I will mostly try to swim. <laughs> the natural progression in India for beauty queens that sort of won that kind of title was in the movies. My dad said, "Are you? do you want to do it? I said, I'm curious. And he said, well, I never want you to have a what if in your life. Philanthropy has been a huge part of my life, not since I started my career, but since I was a child. We were not patted on our backs if we did something nice. It was just expected. Uh, we were taught the responsibility that comes with privilege. And then when I won Miss World and uh, I saw what happens with a platform, suddenly I was talking to people about things that I had only seen and discussed with my parents. Suddenly I could speak to people about it and somebody else was writing it and then somebody made a donation and changed someone's life. And, you know, I saw the, the use I, my voice could have. And that, that really pivoted something in my brain and um, it became a really important part of what I did. I've been told many, many times that I'm insane for trying and I'll never make it. And, uh, I'm, you know, I'm just unconventional, hence I'll never make it. And I realized many years ago that the fact that you're unconventional or that you have a dream that is different than somebody else makes it unique, in fact. That's your strength. Well, thank you so much for the Game Changing Actor Award. That means a lot to me. Our next game changer isn't just a woman, she's an institution and an ambassador for Greenpeace, who has always used her catwalks and collections as a platform to campaign for positive activism. For the past 20 years, she's been an active supporter for the Environmental Justice Foundation, Friends of the Earth, Amnesty International and War Child, among many others. Never one to mince her words, our environmental game changer is the extraordinary Dame Vivian Westwood. Thank you, Glamour. I am very proud to accept this award, Environmental Game Changer. I am the only person with a plan to save the world from climate change. We have to do it within five years. Support me, follow me on climaterevolution.co.uk. The Friday speech, the Tuesday diary. Love, Vivian. Congratulations, what an absolute icon. Though, I too have a plan. I've been saying for a long time that we should take away beef and dairy farmers' cattle and replace those cows with bees. Bingo, bango, fewer missions, more delicious honey. No one's responding to my letters. And now for our game changer in music. This goes to a band who captured the nation's hearts on X Factor in 2011 and who over the last decade have become a global phenomenon, using their voices not only to entertain, but to inspire and incite change across mental health, racism, and LGBTQ rights. This is their first ever interview of 2021 as a trio. It's the hugely talented Little Mix. Wow, girls. New Year. Yeah. The three of us, mm -hmm. a trio. And can I just say, it was nice going into the new year as a three with a number one single. <laughs> <laughs> and it with a bang, didn't we? Yeah. Went in with a bang. Mm -hmm. I just want to say how far we've come, right? When we used to speak about being feminists or anything like that, like anything slightly political in the past, I think I remember us being on a red carpet a long, long time ago, like nine, ten years ago at the beginning. And they were like, oh, are you feminists? And they put the mic to us and we were like, um, <laughs> and we panicked and we were so terrified to speak about anything like that back then. But we also got told not to say that we were feminists. It's very true. So yeah. I think we always kind of steered away from it and tried to avoid the situation, yeah. didn't we? Yeah. I think we were just scared. We spent far too long being patronised, especially yeah. by like men in the yes. industry. Mm -hmm. I don't know when it happened, but it's sort of, switch happened yeah. between all of us really where yeah. we thought actually no we're gonna say what we want i think it's getting used to like 
we might say something wrong and yeah. we might make a mistake, but being terrified to say anything at all yeah. is worse. Well, there's no change that Because then you're not going to learn. We're not going to yeah. learn. We're not going to know more about all these things, all these issues in the world. If we just sit back and be like, oh, I'm just get to say anything. Now, that's not going to help anyone. I love when we speak out. I love it. Girls, game changer award! Yay! It's a huge achievement. It's massive. And do you know what, girls? I think we really deserve this. Mm. I think over the past couple of years, we've really worked hard at finding ourselves and being confident enough to speak out on things we're passionate about, whether that's individually or as a group. Um, so it's really nice to be recognised for that. Yeah. yeah. And Glamour have helped us with that. Yeah. You guys have always made us come out of our shells, mm -hmm. always made us feel safe in the environment yeah. to speak how we feel about all of our individual issues and what we're going through. So. Thank you guys so much for being so supportive of us yeah. over the whole, all of the years yeah. and we love you. Thank you. And to announce our final award of the night, please welcome back Deborah Joseph. Thanks Catherine and Catherine. This next award goes to a woman who started out on our screens in the 1980s on Australia's longest running drama, Neighbours, and has gone on to have an insatiable pop career, selling over 70 million records worldwide, winning numerous awards, including a Grammy and three Brits, and is the only ever artist to have had a number one album in the UK across five consecutive decades. She's a fervent campaigner for breast cancer awareness, having survived herself, and is a huge supporter of LGBTQ plus rights. She is the definition of reinvention, the princess of pop, and the only person to have had more waxworks made at Madame Tussauds is Her Majesty the Queen. Our game-changing icon could only be the inimitable Kylie Minogue. Hello, Glamour. Thank you so, so, so much for this recognition. This is truly unexpected. A total honour and I'm, I am very much humbled by this. Thank you for giving me uh, an excuse to pause for a minute and really reflect on the many things that have got me to where I am today. The people, the places, the tears that sometimes led to triumph. And I think the constant I've always had and that I've really fought for is is to not be boxed in to really be able to shape shift and morph and grow and develop and for that reason to be part of your game changers awards is very meaningful to me if that can be encouraging to anyone to follow their path and to enjoy that voyage of self-discovery and and your place in the world that's just amazing Happy anniversary, happy 20th to you. We've had a lot of fun over those 20 years and uh, I look forward to the next 20. So thank you once again and lots and lots of love. I hope you don't mind me jumping in. I also wanted to express my heartfelt thanks to all the NHS frontline workers who continue to pull out all the stops to save lives and keep us safe. From the doctors and nurses, to the cooks, cleaners, porters, and care staff, your actions over the last year have been truly heroic. Like so many others, I've been blown away by your courage and compassion, and by your incredible humanity and unwavering dedication. As the Mayor of London, it's been one of the most humbling experiences of my life to speak to those brave NHS staff in our city. You are the best of us. It's my honour now to hand over to some of our NHS frontline workers from Northwick Park Hospital right here in London to accept the Game Changing Award. Thank you, Sadiq. This has been a challenging time for the country, the world, and our work has placed us at the centre of this pandemic. The applause and recognition from the public has kept us going and motivated throughout. We don't see ourselves as heroes or icons, we're just normal people doing a job that we feel passionately about. But we just want to say, Thank, thank you, you Glamour UK, UK, for this amazing award. Did you know the collective noun for a group of Sydney-based gay men is a minogue of gays? Hmm. 
And this, dear audience, is where our evening ends. And like every good night, we'll end where we started, at the free bar, wondering, what's it gonna be like when we're unleashed in a club and the DJ puts on WAP publicly for the first time? Yeah. Wait, has anyone actually seen a bartender? Oh yeah, I think one's due back in April. Thank you to all our awardees for being so exceptional in your fields during what has been a time that I'm personally not even going to mention to my grandchildren. Yeah, I'll pretend the whole thing never happened. Like the Trump presidency or that time I agreed with Pierce Morgan on something. Chilling. Now let's drink this bar dry, because no one else is gonna. Mm. Bowlin. Ballin'. Ballin'.